Right, welcome to part 2b of today's lecture, lecture 4 on business level strategy. In this part for objectives 3, 4 and 5, we're going to look at the generic strategy differentiation. Differentiation is an integrated set of actions taken to produce goods and services that the customers perceive as different in important ways. When a firm uses a differentiation strategy, it produces non-standardized products for customers who value different features in their product, value features that make them believe that their product is different to the other products in the marketplace. The success of a firm's differentiation strategy depends on its ability to continuously upgrade the features of the differentiated product. Apple, iPhone and Samsung Galaxy are two differentiated products. Toyota and Mazda are two differentiated products. Still in the same market, maybe direct competitors, but different products with different sets of features that the customers value. People are willing to pay more for a BMW than a similarly featured Hyundai because their perception of the brand, but also the perception of a range of other characteristics of BMW that differentiate it from Hyundai. Again, we can look at the value chain and different way, things that we can do within the value chain to make our product differentiated. Value chain differentiation tends to focus on the product and not necessarily the process when it's um, making changes. So for example, having strong basic research in technological development so that you can invest in technology that makes you be able to differentiate your products, but your products different is a focus of differentiated strategy. As distinct from in our cost strategy, what we see is you're investing in process R&D to improve and reduce the cost of the process you have to produce your product. So this slide, just like the last slide uh, from the previous section is an important slide. So what can we do? What value creating activities are there in our value chain that will create a differentiated pro product? Normally firms have highly developed management information systems because they need to know what the customer wants, they need to know what's ha happening in their organization, they need to have the strong linkages. They tend, differentiated products tend to have an emphasis on quality rather than price, on compensate work and, and supporting through the way they manage their human resources, to support creativity and productivity as distinct from cost reduction. They therefore may use subjective rather than objective performance measures. Firms that seek to follow a differentiation strategy tend to have high basic capability in research, technology that's focused on the customer. They try to access high quality raw materials and have a integrated or unique method of delivering products. Tesla sells directly to the customers, partly to reduce costs, but also to create this unique customer relationship. Mini call their car yards, the mini garage, to create a different customer relationship. High quality supportive uh, replacement parts, superior handling, attractive, well-designed products, Rapid response to consumer specifications and changes in consumer desires, consumer needs. Effective and efficient order processing, credit relationships to attract and retain customers, and the development of a personal relationship are all things that are associated with a differentiated strategy. So how does differentiation deal with the five forces? In terms of rivalry, a differentiated product protects you from competitors because of brand loyalty. People are loyal to iPhone. People are loyal to Apple. People buy the same car over and over again. People have a preferred brand of shampoo. 
These are all about differentiation and customer loyalty. Differentiation can mitigate the power of buyers because buyers that are seeking a differentiated product with unique features that match their needs are less price sensitive. Differentiation strategies can protect you from the bargaining power of suppliers because they enable to absorb price increases because you've got higher margins. And it also means you're more likely to be able to pass on higher supply, supply prices to the buyers because they're loyal to your brand, to your product. And they act as a barrier to entry um, uh, for entrance of new products because they have to surpass in quality the existing products. So when Hyundai launched its cars, initially they launched under a cost leadership type focus, but then they moved to a different type of focus, a differentiated focus, where they were basically having, so it was a differentiation concentration, I shouldn't use the word focus in that way, a differentiation strategy, where they were basically providing the same level of features or slightly better than Toyota at a cheaper price because they had to surpass the the existing um, companies to be able to gain market share as a, at the higher level of the marketplace. If we look at some of the Chinese manufacturers, they buy a Western brand. SAIC have basically bought multiple Western brands like MG, multiple failed Western brands, and they've rebirthed them, birthed them. So they appear to be an English brand or they appear to be a well-known brand so that they can capitalize on that well-known brand as a part of an attraction for being able to produce in China and, and, and export using that brand. The entrance products, if they are going to follow a differentiation strategy, have to enter by being as least, at least equal and probably better than proven products, but offering lower prices, which protects the current firms from new entrants. Brand loyalty also protects the differentiated product from substitutes because you try, because people are less inclined to test new products or switch to a new products if your product is differentiated. And you may well already have an ecosystem which you are tied to that makes it difficult or at least um, not convenient to switch. One of the reasons that Apple has fought so strongly against the European Union's um, prescription that there should be a common charging plug on electrical items, and that common plug is the USB-C, which is also called the Thunderbolt, is because it ceases that, it removes another aspect of differentiation of their product from other products. Interestingly, this week, with the launch of the Macintosh Air 2020, Forbes has run an article saying, now that thin and light isn't different, what is the advantage of buying an, a Macintosh Air? Because basically you're paying more for no more or even less features. But there are still people who are adequately, uh, are very committed to the Macintosh brand, the Apple brand. So what are the risks of differentiation? Will the price differential between the differentiated product and the cost leaders products become too large? This is why we don't see European brands of televisions anymore. Even Japanese brands of televisions are under, pre are, are, are under pressure being usurped by Korean brands because people were not willing to pay the higher price for a Japanese brand or a European brand for the same product that was available from a Korean brand. Different dentures ceases to provide value for which customers are willing to pay. People are willing to pay for the extra. It narrows the customer's perceptions of the value of differentiated um, features. So as you get used to the fact that you don't value all these extra features or you don't use the features, why would you buy the product? Now, I know I'm bashing Apple a little bit, but the touch bar in the Mac Pro 
What's the use of the touch bar in the Mac Pro? There's hardly any apps that work there. You've lost your escape key. You have to recode your um, cap slot if you want a physical escape key. What's the value of spending the extra money on the touch bar? Well, there isn't any value. That's why it comes as standard and the price is reduced. And finally, counterfeit goods replicate the features of the firm's products at significantly reduced prices. And counterfeit goods sounds quite extreme, but there are also goods that are similar, not counterfeit, counterfeit that people are not willing to pay the extra for. Aldi's strategy of brands that aren't brands fits exactly that model of, a, of, of providing the same level of quality for customers who aren't willing to pay the extra for the different brand. So what I'd like you to do now before proceeding to the next part of the lecture, and the next part of the lecture is when we're looking at the focused strategy and also we'll be looking at the integrated cost leadership strategy, integrated cost leadership differentiation strategy. What I'd like you now to do is look at the Nike video or any video that says how great Apple is because it's all about differentiation in any case. And then after that, we'll come back with part 2C.